third secondary class, general sciences section, mathematics. It's a chapter five, inverse trigonometric function. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to study the inverse functions of cosine, sine, and tangent functions. We will start with an activity from the textbook, page 49. In part 1, g is a function defined on 0 pi by g of x equals sine x. And in part a, we have to solve the equation g of x equal half. Graphically, the straight line y equal half cuts the curve of a g of x, which is sine x, where x is limited between 0 and a pi, at two points whose respective abscesses are pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Thus, this equation g of x equal half has two solutions. On the other hand, if sine x equal half, we search for the angle whose sine x equal half, which is a pi over 6. And this leads to two solutions in the interval 0 pi, which are pi over 6, or x equal 5 pi over 6. Part B, does a g have an inverse function on 0 pi? And we have to justify. We know that the inverse function exists on an interval if for every image, there exists one and only one pre-image. But what is the case here? The line y equal half cuts the curve of g at two points, and thus we have two abscesses. So for the ordinate half, there exists two abscesses. For the image half, there exists two pre-images. One of them is pi over 6, and the other is 5 pi over 6. Then the function g doesn't admit an inverse function on the interval 0 pi. In part two, we have the function f of x equals sine x, which is the same as the function g of x given in part one. But here, the domain of definition is a changed from zero pi to minus pi over two pi over two. And the question is to solve the equation f of x equal half. Graphically, the straight line y equal half cuts the curve of f at one and only one point whose abscissa is pi over 6, then it is the only solution. And on the other hand, if sine x equal half, the angle whose sine x equal half is pi over 6, and the only solution in this interval is pi over 6. So there is a possibility of the existence of the inverse function of f over this domain. Part B proved that f has inverse function, f inverse on minus pi over 2, pi over 2. But the existence of the inverse function admits Two conditions. F prime of x equal cosine x and cosine x is greater than or equal to zero on minus pi over two pi over two. And moreover, f is strictly increasing and it is continuous. As we can see in the figure also, f is strictly increasing and continuous over the interval minus pi over two pi over two, then f inverse exists. Part C, determine the domain of definition and the range of F inverse. From the graph, we can easily see that the domain of F inverse is F of the closed interval minus pi over 2 pi over 2, which is equal to the closed interval minus 1, 1. And the range of F inverse is the closed interval minus a pi over 2 pi over 2. Part 3, set up the table of variations of f. Given the information before, it is very easy now to set up this table, and which shows us that the domain of definition of f is minus pi over 2 pi over 2. f prime, which is the derivative of f, is positive, and consequently, f of x varies from minus 1, strictly increasing, to 1. The function arc sine x. As a summary for the activity we did before, f of x equals sine x. It is defined over minus pi over 2, pi over 2. It has a derivative cosine x, which is greater than or equal to 0 on this interval. And f is strictly increasing. Note that here the derivative f prime is greater than or equal to 0. It is equal to 0 at only one point. That's why we can still say that f is a strictly increasing function. And it is continuous on the closed interval minus pi over 2 pi over 2, then f inverse exists. The table of variations of f is given below. And the inverse function, g of x of f inverse of uh, x, it is sine inverse of x, and now it is denoted by arc sine x.
Domain of definition of a G is the closed interval minus 1, 1. Range of a G is the closed interval minus a pi over 2 pi over 2. And it is an increasing function by this property, f inverse prime of y equal 1 over f prime of x. So f inverse prime and f prime have the same variation. Table of variations of g is given below. The domain, as we said before, it is minus 1, 1. The derivative is positive, and g of x varies from minus pi over 2 strictly increasing to pi over 2. Notice that the g prime is not differentiable at minus 1, 1. Graph of g of x, which is equal to arc sine x. The following is the graph of f of x equal sine x, which is defined from minus infinity to plus infinity, but we want to limit our study on the interval minus pi over 2, pi over 2. The graph of the inverse function of f is symmetric to that of f with respect to y equal x. For that reason, we take a point d on the curve of f, and we draw it symmetric with respect to y equal x. We move d on c in order to get the inverse function f inverse of x equal r sine x. Derivative of arc sine x. We know that there is a relation between the derivative of f and the derivative of its inverse given by the following property. f inverse prime of y equal 1 over f prime of x. But f prime of x equal cosine x and we already have y equal sine x and x belong to minus pi over 2 pi over 2. So cosine x is a positive and cosine x equal radical 1 minus sine square x which is equal to radical 1 minus y squared. Then, in this case, f inverse prime of y equal 1 over radical 1 minus y squared after substitution. And f inverse prime of x equal 1 over radical 1 minus x squared. We have to remember that the composite of f and its inverse, f inverse of x, is equal to x, where x belongs to the domain of f, as well as the composite of f inverse and f of x is equal also to x, where x belong to the domain of f inverse. By this, we have a remark where for x belong to minus pi over 2 pi over 2, arc sine sine x equal x, and for x belong to the closed interval minus 1, 1, sine arc sine x is also x. Next, we want to study the function arc cosine x. The function f of x equal cosine x is defined from minus infinity to plus infinity, but we are going to limit our study on the closed interval 0 pi. Why 0 pi? Because on this interval, the derivative of f is minus sine x, and minus sine x is less than or equal to 0 on this interval, which shows that f is strictly decreasing, even though f prime of x vanishes at only one point. And in addition, it is continuous on 0 pi, then f inverse exists. The table of variations of f is given below. x belongs to the domain 0 pi, f prime is negative, and f of x is strictly decreasing from 1 to minus 1. The inverse function g of x equal f inverse of x equal cosine inverse of x. It is denoted by arc cosine x. Domain of g, it is f of domain of f, which is f of the closed interval 0 pi, it is minus 1, 1. And range of g is the domain of f, which is the closed interval 0 pi. We said before that the derivative of a function and the derivative of its inverse has same sign. So as f is decreasing, then its inverse function is decreasing as well. Thus, the table of variation of a g is given below x belong to the domain minus 1, 1, g prime is negative, and g of x is strictly decreasing from pi to 0. Graph of r cosine x. The following is the curve of the function f of x equal cosine x, which is defined from minus infinity to plus infinity. But we want to limit our study in the interval 0 pi. We know that the curve of f inverse is symmetric to that of f with respect to y equal x. So we take a point on the curve of f and represent it symmetric with respect to y equal x in order to draw the curve of arc cosine x. We notice that the domain of a g, which is the inverse function, is the closed interval minus 1, 1, and the range of a g is 0 pi, and moreover, g is a decreasing function. Derivative of r cosine x. 
Back to the relation f inverse prime of y equal 1 over f prime of x, and now it is equal to 1 over minus sine x. y equal cosine x, and since cosine x belongs to 0 pi, then sine x is a positive, so that sine x equal radical 1 minus cosine square x equal radical 1 minus y square. Then f inverse prime of y equal to 1 over minus radical 1 minus y square after substitution, and consequently f inverse prime of x equal minus 1 over radical 1 minus x squared. Still, we have to remember that f inverse round f of x equal to x, where x belongs to the domain of f, and f round f inverse of x equal to x, where x belongs to the domain of f inverse, in order to remark that for x belong to the closed interval 0 pi, arc cosine cosine x equal to x, and x belong to minus 1, 1, cosine arc cosine x is equal to to x. Finally, we will study the function arc tan x. The function f of x equal tan x is defined over the open interval minus pi over 2 pi over 2. Notice that tan x is not defined at x equal minus pi over 2 or x equal pi over 2. The derivative of f, as we learned before, is f prime of x equal 1 over cosine square x, which is strictly positive. And here it also shows that f is strictly increasing and it is continuous over this open interval, then f inverse exists. The table of variations of f of x equal tangent x is x belongs to the domain minus pi over 2 pi over 2, f prime of x is positive, and f of x is strictly increasing from minus infinity plus infinity. Let's go and study the inverse of tangent x. The inverse function of f of x equal tan x is g of x equal f inverse of x, which is denoted by arc tan x. Now, the domain of definition of a g is f of the domain of f, which is f of minus a pi over 2 pi over 2, which is an open interval. It is minus infinity plus infinity. Range of a g, it is the domain of f, which is the open interval minus a pi over 2 pi over 2. And as also we said before, that f and f inverse has same variation, then since f is an increasing, strictly increasing function, then g is also a strictly increasing function. The table of variations of a g is given below. x belongs to the interval minus infinity plus infinity, g prime has a positive sign, and g of x varies from minus pi over 2, strictly increasing towards a pi over Graph of arc tan x. The following is the curve of the function f of x equal tan x, which is not defined over the interval, all the points in the interval minus infinity plus infinity, so we will limit our study on the interval minus pi over 2 pi over 2. The curve of its inverse is symmetric to the curve of f of x equal tan x with respect to y equal x, so we will take a point c on the curve of f of x and draw its symmetry with respect to y equal x and continue the curve of the inverse function function arc tan x symmetric with respect to y equal x. Derivative of arc tan x. The property f inverse prime of y equal 1 over f prime of x equal cosine square x with y equal tan x and the relation cosine square x equal 1 over 1 plus tan square x gives us that f inverse prime of y equal 1 over 1 plus y square and f inverse prime of x, which is the derivative of arc tan x, is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. We also have to remember that f inverse round f of x equal x, where x belongs to the domain of f, and f round f inverse of x equal x, where x belongs to the domain of f inverse, to have those very important remarks that for x belong to the open interval minus a pi over 2, pi over 2, arc tan tan of x is x, and for x belongs to the open interval minus infinity plus infinity, tan of arc tan of x is x. Before moving to practice, we shouldn't forget the following, that arc sine x has a domain closed interval minus 1, 1, and all of its images are in the closed interval minus pi over 2, pi over 2. Arc cosine x is defined over the closed interval minus 1, 1, and has all of its images in the closed interval 0, pi. And arc tan x is defined over the open interval minus infinity plus infinity, and has its, all of its images in the open interval minus pi over 2, pi over 2. Now calculate and justify the first part 
are cosine cosine 11 pi over 3. Well, this one reminds us with the, rem with the remark that says r cosine cosine x is x. But can we put 11 pi over 3 here? Of course, no, we can't because 11 pi over 3 is an image which does not belong to the closed interval 0 pi. So what can we do in this way? We want to find an appropriate angle that has same cosine. r cosine cosine 11 pi over 3 it can be written as r cosine cosine 4 pi minus pi over 3 is the same as 11 pi over 3 and cosine 4 pi minus pi over 3 is cosine minus pi over 3 but still now we have r cosine cosine minus pi over 3 can we put the answer minus pi over 3 referring to that remark which says r cosine cosine x is x? No, because minus pi over 3 does not belong to the clause interval 0 pi. But we have cosine minus pi over 3 is the same as cosine pi over 3. So r cosine cosine minus pi over 3 is the same as r cosine cosine pi over 3. And the answer is pi over 3. Part 2. Arc sine cosine 13 pi over 3. Here, there is something weird. Arc sine cosine. We don't have arc sine sine and we don't have arc cosine cosine. So the only way is that to perform and compute cosine 13 pi over 3 and let us see what will be the answer. Arc sine cosine 13 pi over 3 can be written as arc sine cosine 4 pi plus pi over 3. And we know that cosine pi over 3 is half. So arc sine cosine into 4 pi plus pi over 3 is arc sine half. Arc sine half. What is the image of half under the function arc sine? It is a pi over 6. Because I can say that sine of pi over 6 is half. Part 3. Arc sine sine 11 pi over 6. Yes, I have arc sine sine, but 11 pi over 6, is it in the interval minus pi over 2 pi over 2? No, this is not the case. So also we have to find an angle which matches with the same sign as 11 pi over 6. And arc sine sine 11 pi over 6 now is equal to arc sine sine minus pi over 6. And yes, it is true, minus pi over 6 belongs to minus pi over 2 pi over 2, so that's the answer. Part 4. Arc tan tan 9 pi over 4. It is arc tan tan. But is the answer 9 pi over 4? Surely not, because 9 pi over 4 is not a value between the, in the open interval minus pi over 2 pi over 2. But arc tan tan 9 pi over 4 is equal to arc tan tan 2 pi plus pi over 4 which is equal to arc tan tan pi over 4 and now pi over 4 yes it, it belongs to minus pi over 2 pi over 2 then the answer is pi over 4. For more practice you can refer to your textbook and do the following exercises written below.